That while, was a stimulating while you, year. While you were doing that, I was teaching for a year in Singapore. Yeah, I recall And that. Uh, I think I had a free telephone line, and I think I called you or you called me, one or the other, and uh, informed me about this. And of course, I had been chair of the uh, University Library Committee for several years before I went to Singapore. And yeah. so I was uh, very, very thrilled to know that you were going to be directing it. And then when I get back, uh, you have developed a digital library within Strozier Library. Yeah. Tell them a little bit about that. That is fascinating. Well, it was uh, uh, just one of those opportunistic time uh, times. The uh, well, what had happened uh, a few years before the state had given the university the opportunity to carry all the universities, not just FSU. The opportunity to carry over certain categories of funding from one year to the other, which was very helpful. Except that some people began to use it as a uh, slush fund. And uh, there came a year in which the legislature, uh, as it does from time to time, was desperately looking for loose money. And that carryover fund in the university system had grown to about $160 million. Well, you can imagine the greed with which the legislature uh, looked at that fund. And so uh, the universities in general, particularly FSU, wanted projects that could be uh, begun and completed within a fiscal year. And this was about January, as I recall. Uh, one of my criticisms, not just mine, but one of the campus's criticisms of the library was that it had never uh, had any uh, interest in uh, information materials that weren't in uh, print. And uh, there was a demand for a, uh, uh, the library to move into the audiovisual area, and it was heightened by the fact that the School of Dance, which is a, a fairly prominent one, had just been severely criticized in uh, its accreditation report because it did not have access to audiovisual materials, which are very important in dance, where you can watch people dancing and study their movements and so forth. So they had, they had wanted that, and so uh, we put together a, uh, a proposal in, in very short order to create an audiovisual center in, in the library, found the space for it, provost gave us the money, we ordered the materials, we ordered the equipment, and, uh, and the thing came about. So uh, we were extremely pleased with that. And it has uh, g grown greatly since then, and I think is uh, getting to be a, a major service area for the library. Well, I personally uh, will be using this for, these, for editing these videotapes because they have a, got another grant. I don't know if you were director when they got the grant, $50,000 to buy high-end computers to be able to edit video. No, but I'm glad that it happened. And yeah, they have, it's a, it's a wonderful lab. It's probably one of the finest labs anywhere in the country that any faculty or students can go and use today in this open access digital library, yeah. which is a part of the main Strozier Library. And uh, by the way, for any of our viewers, if you haven't visited Strozier Library lately, you will not believe the transformation that's taken place. Um, they actually have a Starbucks in the lobby, and uh, it's used, I mean, it's just throngs of students. Bill, I think, uh, helped emphasize that. Uh, you, were, you were director, and then you were also director again a little later yeah, on. Yeah, uh, in um, um, 2006, the same situation came about. The um, director decided to uh, retire and wanted to step down before retiring, so um, the provost again asked me, and uh, I, I had to really consider it that time, but did. And uh, it was supposed to be a six-month period, but again, it took a, a little over a year to uh, get the search done and, and for the director to leave where she did. And we got a very, very capable director who I think is proving to be quite popular and, and very successful, even in, in a, a tough year financially. So we. Uh, I did it again for uh, actually 13 months that time and uh, found it very challenging to, to go there at 74 and right. take that on, but uh, uh, I think we got some things done that needed to be done and uh, 
did a lot of morale building and a lot of cheerleading this time. And, uh, so it, it again was an interesting experience. Uh, well, it, it, there's just throngs of students that use it and somewhere along the way they got these beautiful half rock chairs at all the tables. So the students can legitimately rock back in these chairs and, and wear themselves up. And they yeah. always did it with the old chairs anyway, so why not yeah. have well, chairs? These, that, these are built to do that and they're very comfortable. Yeah, and they're, they look, the, the whole place just looks very attractive. It's got all brand new uh, thin screen computers uh, all over the library as well as uh, other accoutrements. Well, now, we've got another, just a few more questions. Uh, why did you leave your previous job to come to FSU? Well, as, as I said earlier, I had been in that job, a um, total of about, well, in the administration of that school, a total of 14 years, and uh, that seemed a good long time. Uh, I had sort of, uh, since I had recruited uh, most of that